Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of What Do You Call It podcast. I'm your host GB. Uh, the reason I'm kind of creasing off a little bit at the moment, um, my guest today, uh, <laughs> British pro wrestler, um, the Cosway Killer Adam Lowe. So I normally just introduce him and then speak to him about his career, but we actually just had a brief interaction about the uh, the backgrounds and filters and basically all he wanted was to have blur and yeah, he had like pearls and the bird and just wasn't going for him so this is why he has the background or the overlay that he currently has and do you know what it works for him like <laughs> yeah. 20 minutes of absolute just fooling around choosing it's the background such... it's like when you had an old phone and it was like -na 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 -na. And no no I I'll continue changing it throughout the recording I'm fine with that oh no because I'm going to crack <laughs> up that's not there so if you, if you could Put me off, then I'll be quite proud. Um, okay. No, <laughs> thank you for coming on today, mate. It's, I much appreciated. Um, I actually want to kick start the show by talking about your Tajiri story because you said that you had a weird story oh, that involved right, okay. um, <laughs> uh, wrestling legends. I've got to ask because I was going to originally save it to the end, but I'm going to kick start the show. If you can tell me about this story between you and Tajiri, and I've got a feeling it's going to be quite bad, but I want to hear it. Let's go. Uh, I I did a show in Portugal, and before the show, there was a seminar with Tajiri. He famously does not speak any form of English. Tajiri also knows how to actually fight. So, uh, in a traditional wrestling training uh, um, seminar, first thing you do is rolls, and it's just to guess uh, and gauge how people actually move. Mm -hmm. uh, he's he's in in. English telling people and you just have to decipher what that meant uh, so he'd then whisper into someone's ear who would translate it into Portuguese who mm -hmm. would then translate it into English so I got a broken down version anyway people were getting into the ring rolling twice forward every time they'd roll they'd get up and he'd kick him in the back of the head because I understood why he was doing it. He was like, nah, you're meant to face your opponent. If you roll in, it's nice that you can do a roll and a little jab, 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 bang. But no, face your opponent. Everyone gets in and, and they continue getting kicked in the back of the head and they're like, oh, stop it. Oh, it's... And I'm, I'm a scrappy lad from crew. <laughs> I got in there, I was like, I know what I'm doing. I'm not taking this roll once he, as he's coming to do it i've already kicked him in the back of the head <laughs> bad yeah what was I'm his like, reaction I, it was the funny thing is it was respect because i understood what the drill was for yeah so we had a moment the entire room went oh oh, oh, oh no you've just kicked like a legend yeah and i was like i mean I, if people are gonna remember me <laughs> uh there was then an unknown moment of telepathy where mm -hmm. our eyes locked and it was like, oh, I know. And he was like, oh, you know. And I went out. I tried to speak to him afterwards. Uh, I've learned somewhat Japanese. So, like, it was morning, like, Ohio, um, Ohio, Gaizamas, Hajime Maste, Adam Des, Yorosku, Ono uh, which is like, hey, up, good morning. Uh, my name's Adam. Nice to meet you. Please look upon me favourably. I'm a student in, in a kind of thing. And even when I made that effort, he was still like, nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> I mean, none of it. None of it. So you got to kick him and you tried to say good morning in Japanese and he just was pretty much just yeah. like, fuck right off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I yeah. So... After the seminar, what did like the people that were a part of it? What did they say to you, Bad? I know you gave the initial reaction. They went, "Oh, we did that," but like, were people like, "Let's avoid him at the plague." I, uh, I, everywhere I go now, I have to like rein back, check and fight, because mm -hmm. uh, like in the pro wrestling world, there's like. There's the shooters, the like people that don't wear knee pads, and they're like, "Oh no, they're gonna kick our heads in." And then there's like, oh, I'm gonna say others, and I mean this in the nicest way, but mm -hmm. like over the top stuff. So 
the people that were at that seminar, I got invited back um, a few times. Oh, that's right. And I still have the same reaction. They're like, oh, don't mess with it. (laughs) Guys, you know, like, you know, like, I'm never going to do this to you in the ring unless, like, you've slept with with one of my exes. Yeah. Like, you've you've messed around with me. I'm never going to do that. And even then, I'm going to have to, like, require loads of winding up. I'm never actually going to do it in um but like pe- like when i go for a penalty kick people tense up mm-hmm. or when i um uh, we were rolling around today uh i get into the ring people go oh and it's like no like it's it's not about that uh but yeah uh, i have another like load of weird stories about traveling because no one like no one knows who i am and i love it and then i get like a weird reputation like reputation uh so even now when i walk into that place they're like ooh. <laughs> Please remember you though, mate. At least you're not like in the background, and you got invited back as well, which I do have to applaud you for. Um, yeah. I will ask about some of your other weird stories because it's obviously got me intrigued as well. And I know the listeners are going to want to hear this, but I do want to rewind it a little bit, and I want to find right. out. I want to find out first, basically, when did you discover wrestling? Uh I growing up, I actually hated wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> like I know I know this is uh sacrilegious and stuff like that but I hated wrestling I was like <laughs> why why would you even watch that fake stuff oh. like oh it's awful like it's all over the top like why would uh think about what wrestling like fundamentally is at the time I was like an undead necromancer brings his brother back who is a demon who is a demon yeah to fight somebody that has slept with his wife and this was a storyline at the time in a ring that's on fire but it's real but it's real wrestling wrestling (laughs) so i was always like oh man that's awful uh and i I went down the the fighting background growing up i did jujitsu karate yeah um so yeah i never got into it and then um and then i actually saw it (laughs) <laughs> so we were at i was about uh, 15 i was 15 yeah uh, and my family we always go to disney but we are disney obsessed and we're at universal studios in orlando and it's when tna are doing their tapings yeah so uh we walk in and the first moment of wrestling and my favorite wrestler to this day is odb um the first thing i see of wrestling is yeah. the crowd giving odb like stick and she spits a whole chicken leg into someone's face i'm like i get it now i get it i, I understand wrestling <laughs> where's the phone thing <laughs> i want to go can we go see it? <laughs> it yeah yeah i was hooked ever since so like my first show experience it was odb versus awesome kong uh, and it was just a. It was. It wasn't even a. It wasn't even a match. Like no holes, nothing like yeah. that. It started with ODB spitting <coughs> whiskey from her hip flask into Awesome Kong's face. Mm-hmm. Awesome Kong just laying in with strikes and stuff like that. And then we had like tag matches. I remember City Machine Guns. Oh, uh, and it was. And this is the thing. So, the main event was Mick Foley. He didn't know who it was. Oh my god, this is weird to hit like ODB is pretty much your first introduction to wrestling and you're a show uh, and you don't know who Mick Foley is. <laughs> yeah, Fuck me yeah, hell. I had no idea who Mick Foley was. Uh, and I genuinely can't remember the person it was against. I think it was Jeff Jarrett, uh, who also someone that I didn't know. Uh, and I was like, why are two old people fighting? <laughs> 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 why, why are two old people? so yeah that was that was my introduction to it uh and i was i was hooked uh once i understood yeah, it's you, man, by the way like this is the first time like i've had this in the show it's not it's like oh undertaker or austin and whatever odb chicken spitting in the face sold <laughs> yeah yeah odb uh my the only two the two old men my... in the ring as well wrestling main event <laughs> yeah the only two people that my dad knows is i use my dad as like a ref like wrestling reference yeah so i'm like oh, i'll try this i'll try this idea out because he, he doesn't care he doesn't care like i was like oh uh uh dad uh what are you doing with them carpet grips 
uh, a few days ago and he's like, what do you mean carpet grips? And I was like, if I was to hit someone with carpet grips and he's like, tetanus, tetanus, no, no, that's grim, don't do it. Uh, but the only two wrestlers to this day that he knows are Christian Cage and OD ODB. Yeah, proper that's TNA it. fan, I love it. And you actually got <laughs> yeah. in the United States as well when it was at its prime as well. Fair fucking place, you know. Yeah, so I'd come back in the schoolyard and everyone would be talking about like, uh, like the Hardys and stuff like that. And I was mm -hmm. like, no, the best tag team is Christian Cage and Rhino. I don't care what any of you all say, <laughs> it's Christian Cage and Rhino. <laughs> There's people that talk about Kane Untaken. There's probably like you going, oh, Abyss, Abyss, he's a brilliant, isn't he? This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Mate, I, I can imagine, right? And I'm going to put, I'm going to jump into like you getting into wrestling. I mean, I, I sort of your introduction to it, not a lifelong fan, fair enough, but your hooks on it. What were people's reactions when you told them this story at the wrestling school? Uh, I, the people that I trained with, uh, mm -hmm. the first session, absolute silence, but I, everywhere, I literally train everywhere. Yeah. Uh, at one of my home base schools, uh, their reaction was, I wouldn't last two weeks <laughs> because oh. I don't love wrestling and that I didn't grow up with it. And that I didn't know iconic matches. Like I didn't know who Hulk Hogan was. I don't care who Hulk was. <laughs> I mean, I mean, a bit to be fair, I think that's a popular opinion now. Like, you don't need to know who Hulk Hogan is now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, they were like, "You won't last two weeks. I'm here. <laughs> I'm still here." That's wicked, man. Fair play to you. I mean, what actually inspired you to become a professional wrestler as someone who didn't necessarily love it? What got you hooked into wanting to do it to become a full time wrestler? Uh, genuinely to, pr to prove people wrong. Mm -hmm. So I, I never intended to, to even make money from it. I, I never intended to actually get on a show. I just wanted to train and do better than other people to prove a point mm -hmm. that, <laughs> that you can do it. And then it becomes addictive. Like yeah. I, I have an addictive personality as it is like, it could be anything. It could be anything like chocolate. It could be a tea. Uh, wrestling is kind of, I'm addicted to it. Mm -hmm. And once you get the hook, it never goes away. It's why people can't mm. leave and, and and stay out. Like, it's very hard to leave and stay out. Uh, Rick, Rick Flair's a prime example of that. <laughs> 73, yeah, 74, yeah, yeah. pacemaker. Still having a match. When I when I saw the uh, on Instagram, I saw the video of him starting to take the bump and feed drill. I was like, he's coming back for a match. That's it. This this won't be his last match. You're gonna have to kill him to, <laughs> to stop. I him really do think he wants to die in the ring, and I know he has yeah. said that in interviews before. And people think he was joking or exaggerating. No, I think that's a goal of his. If he dies in the ring, he's happy. No, no, no. Like it's fair no, place. No, I, 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 I agree. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I it's mean, a weird, it's a thing. Um, because <laughs> this comes out in audio version as well. So I was probably just like, why is he just laughing for no reason? It's just because he's just changed the filter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're laughing at an, a person's death in the ring in a business that. I'm not laughing at Flair dying in a ring. Yeah. God, oh. you're going to. Special place. <laughs> uh, <laughs> God, it's hot enough right at the moment. Um, now, cool. you actually... Come on, get on with the interview. Come on. I'm trying, I'm trying. You've actually been trained by some of the best pure wrestlers in the UK, uh, as you advised oh, me. Dean Hallmark, Chris Ridgeway. Yeah. Zach yeah. Gibson, Mr. Popular. Uh, oh, Catholic. yeah. Flim uh, James oh, wow, You've done a little bit, like, research. So, I want to know, yeah. I want to hear from you, like... What were some of your interactions like with them individually, if you can tell, like a short story about each one of them? Right, okay. So I, I train absolutely everywhere. The yeah. person I'm going to credit that you've left out is Sam Bailey. Sam Bailey is absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of other names. A lot of them are now redacted. Uh, the whole point of my experience is, is I take something from every single person. Yeah. Um, my interaction with Ridgeway is I, I suck at being a face. Like, I am just arrogant. I am cocky. I am very, very good at technical wrestling. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yo, really, 
I suck at being a face, and he was like, "Don't be." <laughs> Just that Don't simple. <laughs> that simple. That simple. I was like a old moment of, "Oh yeah," uh, and he was like, "And even when you are a face, think of like Pete Dunn." Uh, Pete Dunn attacked Enzo Enzo More very famously on like two oh five. Yeah, uh, and he forearms him to the back of the head, which in and of itself that's a gruesome act. The entire crowd are like, "Yes!" Like, so from him, I've learned don't change who you are. Like, the reason people invest in you. Mm-hmm. is because you're authentic if i was to go out there and i was to be like hey, yo i'm i'm a cool surfer dude they'd be like no 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 so that's something i've taken from Riddy. um uh, from zag gibson uh i i laid a drop kick in really hard once uh i got blasted at and it's like made me respect uh actual my opponent so before I, i've got to make my stuff look good this is quite early on it's quite early on i've got to make my stuff look good so i, I hit this drop kick and i i clock the dude in the face and i'm like ah uh, yeah <laughs> you show me this one the, the, the way to step up with one foot that was cool uh jd um what did i take away from jd oh yeah um dummy and leg kicks he was like Right, the way you move in the ring, I can tell you can fight. Yeah. So why, as soon as you go into the ring, do you become pro wrestler rather than wrestler? Like, dummy your kicks as you're going in, and then people put their guard up. So it's like, oh, then it opens up your midsection. It opens down your lower. So when you watch me move around the ring now, I don't move left, right, left, right, left, right. I'll do me a kick and it's ever so faint and it's slightly. I do it now, but we were talking earlier. I'm in a towel underneath and just come out of the shower so i'm not gonna for thank the you. sakes of thank keeping you. this pg yeah um yeah i learned to dummy the kicks mm-hmm. which opens up so much and people are like oh, it's really gonna kick off Ooh, is uh rather than throwing a kick missing it stuff like that it, it keeps the illusion uh dean Ormark. uh i i hate flipping i absolutely hate flipping i, I don't like leaving my feet uh, he made me nip up, and I never thought I'd ever nip up on my own. Uh, Dino is one of the legit coolest wrestlers we've got in the UK. Mm. Uh, so I'm, like, so grateful. Uh, I had nothing but good stuff about him. I just generally, like, I spoke to a few people in the past. People really, really like that, man. <laughs> yeah. How, how did you find out all of this stuff, by the way? Like, before, like, this year, I didn't socials. So, like, how, how did you find this out? May may or may not come from uh, a little birdie. Oh, right. Just uh, Fleming yeah. and Eck. It, it may or may not be Dave Meltzer told me, just, you know, my sources. No, I'm joking. He wouldn't even tell me jack shit. Um, oh, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's, I mean, like, like, obviously, the people that are giving that advice in your career, I mean, those seminars, even to Jiri, well, I mean, to Jiri didn't speak to you, but, you know, but just to learn all these stuff from people in the UK and your opponents, just to absorb different kind of information, molds this unique individual that becomes his own you know and i, I think that's that's really cool i actually want to go back mm. to the jiu-jitsu and the mma um that's this is not me gonna be oh i do it as well i don't mm. uh, i mean i used to do a bit of cry but that was that was it um and you said you did that before wrestling why is there a reason why mm. you didn't i know because i know you still do it and i know it's on your instagram as well but is there a reason why you didn't go further with it that makes sense like you have with wrestling it's hard yeah, <laughs> it's <laughs> hard. Like, I, I mean this in the nicest. <laughs> uh, so actual fighting is really, mm. really hard, and it takes yeah. a lot of dedication. Um, there are a few people that do it. So, um, think about to think back to like Inoki, Suzuki, uh, all of the Japanese. They. They spend every morning doing the Gotch Bible and then they'd learn how to actually fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they'd be in the dojo in the morning, learning the actual techniques like to me, bar, to reap, stuff like that. And in the evening the, and, and the afternoon, they'd eat and they'd do pro wrestling. Uh, what people don't realize uh, with pro wrestling uh, and with MMA, with jiu-jitsu, karate, any, any discipline, cheerleading, uh, knitting, 
it takes time and I only have so much. Yeah. So uh, for jujitsu and MMA, the reason I can go far is I'm not aggressive enough. Mm-hmm. I haven't got, and this is truly, I haven't got that in me that actually makes me want to put out another person. Um, I, I, in a way, I'm cocky because I'm very, very good comes to tying people up and it's Mm -hmm. um, a case of when it it comes down to it and i have to knock someone out or choke them i'll do it but i won't let you go i I, because i know what it feels like um so like if it came down to breaking an arm i couldn't break someone's arm and when you get to advanced levels um it it becomes like a a level of of grit so i was in a knee bar uh, and a leg lock today Mm-hmm. and they were like why aren't you tapping why aren't you tapping i'm like because i've just learned this level of pain um you have 24 hours in a day and even though people say oh it's what you do with those 24 hours it's not it, it takes so much my knees are in constant pain uh from from jits my back is in constant pain from pro wrestling but but you do it because you love it you you just love it I really respect that, man. I didn't really like realize that there is a lot that goes into it as well. I remember like the UFC boom and everyone kind of switched over from wrestling to MMA and, you mm-hmm. know, they sort of wanted to get into it, but then they realized like that's actually, there's harder aspects of it. But I feel like you've used that as well to your wrestling. I think you even said, um, I think it was JD who said that oh, I could tell how you stand in your stance, you are a fighter. So, you know, it, it, I think it's quite more common that we see like people make a transition from MMA to wrestling. I mean, look at Riddle, for example, um, Ronda Rousey, when she's not on the microphone, yeah. she is awesome, you know. But yeah. I, yeah. So I, if anyone's a Ronda Rousey fan, I'm sorry, but she is terrible on the mic, but talented. So I fucking... You know, no, 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 Ronda, in the ring, like, Ronda awesome. Rousey is or incredible. There's a really good video going mm-hmm. around on YouTube, uh, and it's of someone mocking her for wrestling. Uh, and they're like, huh, well, let's see some moves then. And she gives them a Hanagoshi, which is just like a hip toss, but you follow through and land on the hip. And it just breaks the dude's rib. And he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> i tell you what, man. You've got, I've also noticed as well, I saw that you have got a sweet gotch power driver. Oh. I know. Oh, that you. was pretty sweet, man. I mean, what what's kind of like Thank you. Th- with that move set? I mean, that move itself specifically. I mean, what inspired you to sort of want to have that incorporate into your move set? Um, I'm very stoic in the mm-hmm. ring. Um, I I even though the, the thing that got me into wrestling is the entertainment act of it because of my I was like, well, no, we should take wrestling a bit more serious. Mm-hmm. Um, for you to love uh, the pro entertainment. Side, it's like what's going on in AEW at the moment. Uh, for you to love the pro wrestling side, there has to be a villain. Happiness and, and um, entertainment comes from being extravagant. Well, let me strip that away. No, you don't deserve that. If you want to spit a chicken leg into my face, you can do it. Go do that on your time. Don't you come into this sacred squared circle and do that on my watch. I hope IDB is so, listening to that. <laughs> so... But um, the gotch comes from you do not let them jump. You yeah. do not let them get in, into an, an advantageous position from it. You choke them out so that they cannot breathe and they've got no oxygen in their tank. And then you deadlift them. Just a pure deadlift and then you drop them on their head. The reason I use that is because the people I look up to, like Suzuki, uh, like Carl Gotch, like all mm. of the women... Um, like coal miner wrestlers from from carnival days who would genuinely have to fight people and then there'd be a plant in the audience that wins and takes the pot home would use it so i have to i have to use it Mm. and it's feared it's it's hated there there aren't many moves now in wrestling where people are like oh yeah but it's not no i drop you on your head i just drop you on your head what are you going to do about Probably it? interesting, man. I don't realise there's a lot more to it as well. I mean, like, I know Carl Gotch is, like, massively influenced, especially, like, a lot of the Japanese wrestlers as well. Suzuki, by the way, love him. Brilliant. When I met him, I was just like, mm. I, I really like you, mate. Proper fanboy, mate. But I was seeing the photo on Instagram later, but it's just, that's me, just like... <laughs> uh, but honestly, it's such a killer. He just has that... 
Oh, that aura about him is so cool. Yeah. He is the man. Have you got any... I feel like... I, maybe I'm assuming or jumping, you know, jumping the gun. But I feel like you want to go to Japan and learn even more there. Is, is that... Am I incorrect there? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, that is the exact goal. Uh, I, I got really, really, really jealous of Ridgeway because my dream life is I wake up, I eat eggs. <laughs> I, I go to a dojo and I lift weights and train. Then I will learn shoot style. Mm-hmm. Uh, so whatever, like at the moment, I'm really jealous of people that can like do Muay Thai because there's so many attack combinations that I'm jealous of. That I'm like, oh, I wish I could do that. And then in the evening, I'd do pro wrestling or a show or or something like that. WWE, TNA, AEW does not interest me yet in the slightest. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pancras, New Japan, Noah, um, uh, oh god, even GCW in like America, and all of these little mm-hmm. little promotions popping up. That's the goal for me. Uh, Over the last I, few I, years, I, it has been proven you can make a really good living now without WP or yeah. AEW yeah. or TNA. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I was uh, like, I, on social media, I looked at what Will Osprey said. Mm-hmm. I have a really fun story of him backyarding, uh, which, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to hold um, you to that one, but I'll let you finish. <laughs> cool. Yeah. And he was like, the W lifestyle's not for me and i'm like a no one i i shouldn't be like aspiring for stuff like that Mm -hmm. but if there was a goal to be able to live half of your life in absolute like seclusion where i get to like chop trees and fight and like just live my little piece of life with like a then get to wrestle is my my dream i absolutely hate like stuff like this stuff like this is weird because i know this is going out to other people but this is a conversation between me and you yeah um so i hate the whole like show business aspect of it yeah like Um, get bombarded with photos and you know social media i think you you see yourself like okay instagram you use but just about but like twitter and facebook and that stuff you won't use which i respect and i don't in a way i don't blame you because especially twitter it has a very very toxic side to it unfortunately Especially yeah, where like the whole are. social media thing is, we're trained to hate each other, mm-hmm. uh, and like really bad because we start comparing ourselves to other people. Yeah. Like, it's not since like this year where I'm like, actually, I'll do my thing on social media, don't look at anything. Like I know I have to do it, but I won't look at anything because then I'm just like, oh man, my body is not in good shape. Oh man, I don't hit moves like this. Oh, I'm yeah. not getting x amount of likes, x amount of. Re- this person doesn't follow me this like so now i'm just like y'all do your thing and i'll do mine um so yeah it it's such a weird business <laughs> we had we were having an interesting conversation and i will ask you like i, I think it's going to be a, cool. a, a fair question because it'll get an interesting answer from you um i want to know as well because how you feel about social media and wrestling and how you're comparing it up as well what would you change about the wrestling business? You know, I know you said there's a there's a good side to it, but there's also sort of an unpleasant side as well. Um, um, there's a lot. There's there's so many things. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, click needs to go. Just just needs to go. Like as much as people say, oh, it's better now. It's not. There are still there are still like divisions there are still like oh there's still tribalism so I, i've always had the problem of um traditionally traditionally it's getting a little bit better um if you train at x place you are not allowed to train at x place if you are with these people you are not allowed to get on with these people yeah if you are on this show then that means you can't be on this show and there are bubbles in wrestling and i hate it i hate it so much with a passion because i'm just like I just want to get good. I, mm-hmm. I just want to wrestle. The only thing in life that makes me happy at the moment is wrestling. Yeah. So why would you would you say, oh, you can't do that because you're from X place? Uh, it's literally like school behaviour, isn't it? Really it's like, like, it's like football it teams, is. isn't it? It is. And 
and my logic to it becomes from behind from I, I come from a different background so if you are in a dojo or like a, 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 like even football training even football training you're taught discipline and you're taught to to respect each other because ultimately at the end of, end of it you want the best for each other whereas wrestling is it's no secret it's not real so mm. th there isn't a level of well this person deserves respect um there are some people that get it. So, like, Dean Allmark, uh, Sam Bailey, like, Chris Ridgway, like, those people demand respect because of what they've done. Like, yeah. And usually it belongs to coaches and teachers. But that's the one thing I'd hate. I hate that gang. I hate that clique culture. Yeah. I hate the, the, the car fave stuff. I hate it. Uh, if I catch anyone out with it, you get out of my car. Just get out my car. No, that, I don't blame you at all, man. I mean, especially what happened during the pandemic. I won't speak on that. But you'd think yeah, you'd kind of bond yeah. people together and sort of, you know, want to get closer and help each other as opposed to still continuing this clicky behaviour that's just, you know, we're back in school again. Like the cool kids sit at the front, at the back or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you know what I mean, though. Well, my, my, my only goal is, like, there is a lot of bad wrestling out there. There's mm -hmm. a lot of bad wrestling out there. Um, our only goal is to make it better. Now, yeah. be the independent scene that could be helping each other to get to the places where they want to. That could be for the kids coming in to, to make sure that they don't have to go through some of the stuff that uh, older older people did. Uh, so the, the only goal for me is just make it better than how I came in. Mm -hmm. That's it. No, I respect that. I absolutely respect that, mate. Uh, I actually want to follow up beyond the Osprey uh, story, the backyard one. If you can tell oh, me no. what happened there. <laughs> uh, is, it, is it a story that he won't like? But I, I feel like, come on, you've said it. You've got to tell oh, me. No. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Um, story time. We've had uh, One of the people that I trained with, uh, I've still got the video, <laughs> I've still got the video of Will Osprey in a gymnasium getting um it's like a blue thunder bomb it's just a blue thunder bomb but yeah can you remember in school where you had them things that you vault over not a top of my head not a top of my head it, i mean school like was a long time for me uh, so it's like a yeah there's there's crash mats uh it's of a backyard show uh and there's like six people but some of the coolest moves <laughs> But it's just performed on PE equipment. It's just performed on PE equipment. <laughs> so there's like hanging bars where you like um, climb up and then. Oh, like yeah, yeah, I remember them now. I remember a them now. Climbing wall and then a vault, a vault thing. So they just start performing these moves on each other, but on PE equipment. It, it was honestly, it was fantastic. Mate, you need to send me that after this. You, you do need to send me that. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. you need to actually say uh, that, some... <laughs> But at least he's having fun though. Yeah. Like, I, I respect that, man. I mean, obviously, avoiding the whole and completely ignoring please don't try us at home. Technically, not P8, but you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, that's. It was on PE equipment. That was the. I can imagine like a teacher just walks in when they're doing it, but it's just like, oh, William. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask. Are you, you going to stop us? What are you going to do? Yeah, exactly. It's like, uh, hold on, we're in the match now. I want to ask you, because I do like <clears throat> your moniker, your nickname, the Cosplay Killer. Um, mm. Am I wrong now? I think this I'm going to be wrong for, but I want to ask, Jim Cornette inspired? Because he likes to say cosplay sometime a lot about wrestlers? No, no, oh, I okay. hate Jim Cornette. I hate Fair him. enough. I don't um, mind him, but I don't agree with anything he says. It makes sense. Uh, I... <sighs> it, it comes from all pro wrestling is cosplaying. Whether you like it or not, it is. Even if you don't have a character, it was said, mm -hmm. this was said to me this week, even if you don't have a character, that is a character. So aren't we all just living out our fantasies from being bullied little kids that just want people to like us? So we're all cosplaying. I'm, I'm a villain. I'm really like a villain because of like my upbringing, my like background and i try to not like place myself as a victim but mm -hmm. character wise i really enjoy killing like the satisfaction out of like there's a little moment in like 
Bambi out, like Bambi's just seen like light go out from uh, from. <laughs> I, I don't know why I go further into this. I think it's quite sadistic. Oh, but, no, that's uh, cool. I enjoy cool. it from other people. Yeah, um, because it's it's rare nowadays in wrestling where you have like an, an actual evil villain. Yeah, genuine. I have no desire ever to be a face ever, 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 ever. I'm just not likable. So. I best go all in on this. This podcast might change that that perception of you, but I think I've all right. Unless you're going to end it with you just being a dick to me, but we'll see. We still got a bit of time. <laughs> okay, okay. Like, remember, like I'm I'm still being me right now. I can go full character if you want to, but um, no, it's it's actually inspired by Patrick Bateman in American Psycho. Um, right. I'm going to do like a photo shoot in a few days, but it, it comes from. American Psycho, he thinks he's doing everything right and he's comparing yeah. himself to other people. Wake up and he'll do a thousand um, sit-ups and crunches. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then that, that thing that breaks him is he gets a business card. The card, yeah, and, and the like, textures of them, yeah. The texture. Oh. It's double folded. So it comes from there. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not a serial killer. You go to prison for that, but the things I'm allowed to do into the ring, I get, a, like, you should applaud me for that, right? Yeah. You get paid you for that. Me. You get cheered. I get, yeah. So it, it comes from Patrick Bateman. Uh, I think he's just an excellent villain. Oh, that's wicked, man. I love that film, by the way. It's, like, it's one of Christian it's, Bale's it's best a great film. It's a great Absolutely film. breakthrough film from Brilliant. The, the book, if you ever get a chance to read the book, the book's weird. It's better, but in a weird way. So... Um, a, a thing about serial killers um, mm-hmm. is that what they they oh, sociopaths. Sorry, sociopaths. Um, sociopaths are justified in their own actions. Mm-hmm. Like think of Thanos with the click. He thinks what he's doing is right, and every single sociopath thinks that they're the victim or that they're the they're the one that's doing it right to take it out on the others. So, oh damn it, I've lost my plate that was it that's the whole thing ah oh, which uh in the book as he's in the jared leto axe murder and scene with the huey lewis that rant and monologue that he goes on to about did you know huey lewis um reformed the group in 1977 mm. and the back the back two members were that goes on for pages and pages and pages and you're like what's this happening and then all of a sudden bam you, he kills him and you remember yeah. oh my god yeah in the middle of a, a horrific scene yeah um, is that when he's playing hip to be square yeah 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 <laughs> which insane. it's it's absolutely fantastic because it's mm. taken oh well this isn't terrifying music and this isn't a situation in which you think there's going to be danger but oh axe die um, if anyone hasn't like, seen it by the way Go watch, watch it, watch it, watch it. Yeah, and nice. I, I like to incorporate that into wrestling. So mm. I'll, um, I'll whap out like a cross body. And people are like, oh, you meant to fall down into a pin now? No, I'll let go of my arms and I'll put you in a knee bar. Here's the danger. So here's the expected. No, take it away. Here's the unexpected. Oh, okay, mate. Proper like think about things, just little things, and I really like that. Like proper interest and in how you break things down and analyze things, and you know, it's not just cosplay killer because that's it. No, there's no meaning that's, to it. And I do feel like that. Cool, yeah, and I feel like there is. I think you know, I know you agree with that. There is a lot of people in wrestling that just have it for the sake of it, not because there's any means to it or to put any thought behind it. You know, and I think that's become a little bit of lost art. But you know, I'm just a fan with a mic, so. Yeah. But don't know. Oh, whoa, no, come on, Ken, Ken, come on, try out, come on, come, come to this side of the ring, come on. <laughs> yeah, mate, I've, tr- I've tried, I've tried it once, it just wasn't for me. I, I went to oh, Drop, okay. Dropkick Academy in Perfect in Essex, and mm. at least I've tried it, but I, I put my hand up and say it wasn't for me. You know, it hurt too much, I just wasn't in the best shape, and I respect anyone that does do it by yourself and every guest I've had on the show, so... But that's why I'm I'm still a lifelong wrestling fan. But I've got to ask um, one of the last questions, and I think it's quite a fun question because every what? answer is different to this question. And I think you'll like it as well because we have had yeah. non-wrestling talk as well. You get to pick three dream dinner guests for your dream dinner party. Yeah. You're the host. doesn't have to be about wrestling. It can be, though, if you want it to be. Up to you, mate. Uh, you're the host. 
dead, alive, fiction, non-fiction, whatever. Three guests. If you can give a reason, right. go for it. Uh, guest number one is Coyote from Looney Tunes. <laughs> Coyote is the best. Like, one day you'll get Roadrunner. Uh, and I think we just need to sit down at that dinner table and just talk about his feelings, you know. <laughs> Over a nice beef Wellington. One day. Maybe that's one of my favourite answers. Really, that's really good, that is. Uh, uh, second one is Machiavelli. Um, he wrote uh, the, the Prince, which is like the founding principle of like how all politics is run. Mm -hmm. since like the middle ages and he's like he's evil he's truly evil but he wrote it as a joke so like i want to i want to sit down at the dinner table and be like do you know like do you know like uh kings used to like execute people because of rope and he's like I, I intended it to be a joke and i'd be like well and then i could list off all of the reasons <laughs> Just like the list of Jericho style. <laughs> the <Yeah>. dinner table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Yeah, it'd be a long time. And then the last one is Gengar from Pokemon. Man, you've just literally like completely thrown me off these, these names. Like, Yeah, Gengar. I, uh, Gengar's the coolest thing <laughs> ever. He's just the coolest. Uh, so that'd be the only person that I'd want to be there and that's that's for us to have a conversation the other two there that awkward you're like oh god Machiavelli's here in the corner oh <laughs> god he's going to talk about that oh the means just for the ends whole bull again Coyote's uh, cooking up ideas like putting way too I'm much salt I'm going to get him one day I'm going to get him yeah. one day <laughs> and Gengar and me are just having a conversation I like it I mean like if, if I if my editing skills are quite good, but I don't think I can do a thumbnail just for those three and yourself with the smileys, <laughs> as we can see right now. <laughs> I mean, that'd be quite sick to me. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know how to use tech. I don't, so. Well, I just taught myself. To be fair, I never went to like in terms of photo. I mean, actual editing, video editing. I did go to university for that, but in terms of actual mm. Photoshop, just taught myself. But I, that was like because I was just really bored and just I was a fat kid, so I just like. I bored <laughs> making wrestling video covers because I'm so cool. <laughs> no, no, no that's, that's the best. It, it comes from insecurity. It, the whole reason we ever do anything that we dream of is because of insecurity. Mm. You live in the dream. I like to think I am. <laughs> uh, <coughs> I've got one last question for you, Adam. What have right. you got lined up next? Anything you want to promote, anything you want to share, or even just anything you want to say? The time is yours. Go, my man. Oh, wow. I hate being put on the spot. Uh, I I want to, this year, I want to see how far I can actually take wrestling. Mm -hmm. uh, I have, uh, I have WAW on the 31st of July lined up. I have BWP in Wales lined up on the 23rd of July. Uh, PCW on the 5th of July. Uh, I train every day, five days a week. This is my promotion time. I'm actually good in the ring. Please take a chance on me. Uh, I'm a no one, but like I swear I can be good. Promise. Uh, Sold. <laughs> yeah, the stuff to, to other wrestlers uh, and to my like trainees is like, just, just keep eating crow and then one day like you get to do whatever you want to do. <laughs> I like it, man. Yeah. I mean, I was actually speaking to um, Chris Lappin from my British wrestling journey. Uh, I had nothing but good things to say about you. Uh, big fan of yours as well. So, and I listened to your interview with him as well. Oh. That was I, I enjoyed that as well. Uh, I did enjoy you talking about festivals as well. That's quite funny. Yeah. Yeah. The oh no 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 the, the one thing oh no no this is it this is this is the defining thing that I will say about wrestling. Uh Forget about the whole promote me, book me stuff. Mm -hmm. We all forget that wrestling's not cool. Like, it's not, so, like, let's just in fun. Like, all the carnivals where, and shout out to, like, all of the Welsh lot that I train with, um, they're, they're the most fun that I ever have anytime because we get to do whatever the heck we want. Wrestling doesn't have to be cool. 
<laughs> it can be double cock shots it can be super kick parties it can be all of the flips it doesn't have to be all of the the like you have to do x post finishes and yeah like yeah 50 splashes to the outside and... but th there's a place for that there is a place for that yeah. and i only learned that recently that like styles mix so like one person can do a load of 450s and then a dick kick <laughs> like yeah that's it my, my last thing is there's there's no right way to wrestle and don't yeah. forget where we come from we are all just, uh carnival workers that said two shillings and you beat tony the big lad and then one day there's a plan like that that's where we come from so have fun with it I like it, man. I like it. That's been a really interesting conversation, my man. Uh, I'll put, I know I can't put your Twitter or anything like that on the description below, but I will put your Instagram if anyone wants to follow you after you listen to this episode and keep up to date with you and your career and see how you end the year. Hopefully it's going to end with a bang. Not DDP style, but you know what I mean. Um, oh, <laughs> and with that, we'll have the last little one. That can be your thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> sorry that one that, uh, that one that one got me a lot more than smile so that's brilliant that one uh, okay there so the go. audio version he's just changed it again and this one is probably the best one he's done it. and I'm so glad you did it wait till the end for that one that's golly um, anytime, anytime. <laughs> I know but, my, I, I know my time cues <laughs> but Adam thank you for coming on mate it's been a blast uh, for everyone that's this is episode thank you there'll be more episodes of what you call it podcast coming out very soon if you can like, share, subscribe to this channel so I can continue this awesome, awesome podcast and produce weekly content for you guys to enjoy. Like you've enjoyed this episode with my boy Adam Lowe when he's not kicking to Jerry's head. But thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Hello there. I've got a special announcement for my next guest. Also, 100th episode. I am Disciple, and you're watching What Do You Call It podcast. Yeah, I heard. <laughs>